I'd like to report I spelled hybrids with a P. <laughs> Where? I just spelled hybrids in my notes, and I spelled it with a P instead of a B. Oh, okay. Because I'm dyslexic, and sometimes P's, B's, D's, and Q's all kind of look the same. I thought you meant you were trying to spell hybrid, but you thought there was, you genuinely thought there was a P in it, not that you just used the wrong letter. <laughs> I'm not going to say no to that. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody and welcome back to another episode of Who is My Doctor? Who is my doctor? Who is indeed? And I am your host, Zach, and I know a lot about Doctor Who. And I'm also your host, Cassie, and I don't know a lot about Doctor Who. And together we're looking at uh, Season 2, Episode 1, New Earth. Hooray! Season 2! Officially Season 2, not like dubious Christmas special, where does it go? Huzzah! This is officially official season two. Series 2. Hooray! <sighs> and so we're now uh, starting proper the new adventures with David Tennant. The new adventures of David Tennant. I I 100% thought you were going to say the new adventures of old Christine. <laughs> like, that's not the show we're watching. Not even a little bit. No, we are watching uh, Doctor Who series two now starring David Tennant as the doctor instead of Christopher Eccleston. Hubba, uh, hubba. And, and uh, hopefully an episode where he doesn't spend half of it napping like he did the last time. And not in jammies. Not in jammies. I uh, mean, not that the jammies is a bad look. It's it's a cozy, comfortable, it's a cozy, comfortable doctor. Yes, it is cozy and comfortable. But now we've seen him in his full suit. He's got his nice couch cover jacket on. His dapper little jacket with his little suit and his sneakers i think <laughs> yeah he has uh converse if i remember correctly uh whoa he's wearing converse whoa, sneakers he's such a cool and guy in 2005 he's like peak nerd chic hey you know what i, I guess 2006 I, now but <laughs> i have recently dug up my converse from the depths of our closet and i forgot how cool I thought those were back in <laughs> ye olden times of 2006, and boy howdy, am I sure glad I still have those. <laughs> My feet are considerably bigger now, but never mind that, they still look cool. Well, before we get into the episode proper, we gotta do uh, our our customary Cassie Profassi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and so I'll just let you know a little bit about, this episode is sort of a spiritual sequel to the end of the world, the second episode of the, first, of, the of series one. I'm and you're not probably gonna wondering. Lie. I'm not going to lie. I forgot what the second episode of season one was. Cause I was hard. I, I was terrified and just still in shock over the mannequin invasion. <laughs> Thick well, beefy boy mannequins. I, must have missed episode two. Well, it's funny because the the quote that you still use most around the house is from episode two, uh, featuring one bitchy trampoline, Cassandra O'Brien. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, water me, water me. <laughs> and uh, Lady Cassandra O'Brien returns for this episode. Oh, no. So I guess the... <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> the first bit of a... Uh... She's a human now. That's my first profassy. <laughs> well, that was what I was going to ask. Uh, how do you think she survived past past the end of the world where she uh, did not get moisturized and cracked? Uh, I was actually thinking that this is... Because I, I just said she's human now. I think this is before that. Okay, you think this is a prequel? Yeah. Okay, so first first guess, this is prequel, not sequel <laughs> uh, for Cassandra O'Brien. I know I'm wrong. <laughs> I mean, if you, I mean, you're welcome to think you've got, this is your opportunity now well, to change no, it. Because if I sit here and think about it too long, I will try to like think about it too 
hard. And I've learned something about these these guesses, my my prophecies for this, is when I really try to sit down and think about things too much, they are always wrong. Okay. So you're so just trying to tr- I'm really trying to go based off of my my natural instincts. Well, all right then. My cast like reflexes. <laughs> well, uh, let's see how good those reflexes do for you with the second thought here. This isn't so much a spoiler as much as a detail in the episode, so I don't mind sharing this with you. But the episode predominantly takes place in a hospital, and all of the nurses in it are a person animal hybrid. What kind of animal do you think they might be hybridized with? Just to give you a small clue, remember this is 2006 effects. Fish. So you no, up- no, 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 no. Because if I've learned anything from this show, they do like using their practical effects. Okay. Fish was the first answer because it was, I'm thinking CG. Mm-hmm. And what's freakier than a bunch of fish people and also, also, and also moisturize. However... Because I know this show likes to use practical effects, I don't think that that is the case. Okay. So what kind of practical creation Something do you think they might have made? furry. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, now I'm second guessing my original prophecy. <laughs> if these are animal hybrids. You said you were going to trust your cast-like reflexes. Uh, They're felines. Okay, so you think they're feline, human feline hybrids. I'm not going to marry it to any type of feline. Okay, I think I think that's fair. Okay, so human feline hybrids, and this is a prequel for Lady Cassandra O'Brien. If it's fish, if it's fish, I'm going to freak out. (laughs) That's my third unofficial prophecy that it's going to be fish, and I'm going to lose my mind. Well, let's find out together how right or wrong our Lady Cassandra is in this episode featuring Lady Cassandra O'Brien in New Earth. This episode of Who is My Doctor is brought to you by Sweater Help. It's winter time. The sun is gone. The wind is blowing and you can't afford to turn on the furnace because you spent all of your money buying holiday presents for your family, your friends, and your work secret Santa. What's a broke baby like you to do? Introducing Sweater Help. Sweater Help is an online service that matches you with the perfect sweater knitting goblin who will make you anything to keep you nice and toasty during this chilly season. It's so convenient. Just create your Sweater Help account, say what you're looking for in warm wear, and Sweater Help's mighty algorithm will pair you up with the most perfect, crafty little guy. I signed up and got matched with this soft, sort of gray Sherpa knitting goblin, and they made me this cardigan with these deep pockets I can stick my little hands into to keep them nice and warm. There is an extra armhole, and for some reason the sweater makes a quiet scream when I wear it. And the goblin keeps asking me for a wooden hammer and a pineapple for reasons he won't explain. Um, but otherwise, I love my sweater. Sign up today and get a free trial period and a complimentary pair of fingerless gloves. Because what's funnier than irony? Get sweater help. And we are back from New Earth. Hmm. New, 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 new Earth. Well, that's how many New Yorks there are. They hit. Oh, that's right. That's right. They may not all. They may not all be on Earth necessarily. New York times fifteen. And you were correct. I fully correct on one, and I'm going to say technically correct on the other. I will also say I'm technically correct because it wasn't not a prequel episode, especially consi- especially considering the way it ended. I would I it ended with the beginning. Yeah, just the fact the fact that you guessed prequel episode in and of itself, I feel, is impressive enough to warrant a point. And then, of course, you got the nail on the head with the feline nurses. They are 
They're straight up Andrew Lloyd Webber's cats. <laughs> but they look like way better. <laughs> yeah. The only little petty thing I noticed about them was just the very clear line under the chin where the prosthetic is, but that's like you they, I don't know what I they could have done. I only saw it because I am me and I pay attention <laughs> to those things. I feel like I was correct on three things, but I'm so glad I didn't say fish people is my answer. <laughs> Ooh. You are correct. You I'm not glad say fish I people. pulled feline hybrids out of the ether. So. Because there was nothing that informed that decision other than Bailey standing on the couch and looking at me. <laughs> so I will say that when I was preparing for this episode, I had a very strong feeling that you would enjoy it. Which is mostly interesting because I'm not a big fan of this episode. And we'll get into why in a little bit. I do think there's some good stuff in it, but um, I I have a really big hang up with it. But we'll get to that later on. Uh, so I'll just let's start with that first. Then what do you think? Um. So as an overall, it did feel a little silly. Yeah. And just a little bit chaotic in that I just don't feel like it, it knew what it wanted to do, where it wanted to go. It knew what bits it wanted to do. Yeah. And there were particular bits I quite enjoyed. <laughs> Me and Cassandra have a lot in common. <laughs> However, we'll get to that later. Uh, yeah, but I I can definitely see why you didn't like it, though. Yeah. Because um... it's silly in a way that reminded me very much of Cart or not cartoons. It it was silly in a way that reminded me very much of sixties and seventies sitcoms, which we all know I am a big <laughs> fan of. So it was a little wacky in the sense of like this is there's some things that yes, we're bending logic in a way to fit this narrative, but whatever. It's a sci fi show. Yeah. You're gonna see it and like it i.e. the different colored IV bags full of what I can only guess are different Powerade flavors. <laughs> the cure-all for every known human disease. <laughs> the cure-all the cure -all for every single one of them. It's just Kool-Aid. Who knew? Is just red dye 40 <laughs> in different proportions. Just different amounts of crystal light. Uh, different flavors. Oh, oh, and electrolytes. And electrolytes. Yeah, there is something where it's it just feels it feels weirdly like dichotomous in a way that I don't particularly care for. Like the sense of humor in it is kind of juvenile, but then the subject matter for the central plot is so dark. There was a weird amount of stuff to unpack. Yeah. And that's where I'm left scratching my head a little bit because it wasn't just a matter of like, oh no, we'll we'll even use her as the prime example because she's back. Yeah. Cassandra is doing something not great. Cassandra wants something. She wants to end these people, these like magistrates and dignitaries lives so that way she can hold the ransom and get lots of money as not awesome as that episode or the the second episode of the first season was at least it had a very central easy to point at point a finger at villain which you didn't know about until the end but regardless mm -hmm. well, this one did feel way more like all right cassandra's back clearly clearly she's going to be the antagonist mm -hmm. but she's actually here because she knows something's up she's concerned yeah she she feels she has a humanitarian effort she feels underway. so extraneous to the plot like she didn't really need to be there yes um, but also it I, mechanically I don't know how this would have panned out otherwise Unless you did have, well, I guess, yeah, you could have, you could introduce a whole other character. Yeah. But I then just... we wouldn't have such a sweet sentimental ending, Zach. <laughs> or we wouldn't have, you know, such critical moments as Billy Piper admiring how hot she is. Talking about her bumper? Yes. Her rear bumper and describing herself as being, as being inside a bouncy castle. Oh, baby. Like living inside a bouncy castle. The mistress is beautiful. Absolutely. Why the fuck do they still have bouncy castles in the year five billion? 
I feel like we would have moved past bouncy castles. No, no, we got bouncy castles right. <laughs> that is a <laughs> flawless design. Immaculate design, Zach. That's what they put in the space station to tell other aliens about us. Or, like, I will say that I do enjoy the kind of unhinged they let David Tennant get when Cassandra takes him over. Oh my god. I loved that. <laughs> I'm a man. Sandra? Goodness me, I'm a man. Young. So many parts. And hardly used. I like that the thing... And it makes sense. Because you don't want to go to the obvious. Because we've all played the game of if you woke up in the other... In a different gendered body, what would you do? Uh-huh. I like that her response is, Oh, two hearts. Now, if they had thrown in, hmm, different teeth, I would have died. That would have been pretty good. But, alas. I, Bringing uh, up the two hearts, though, is 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 good. Because um, I don't know what that would feel like. And now I'm really curious. <laughs> I want to double. Well, as this has been described, wanna, it feels like a samba. <laughs> I want a double heart. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Simulator. A double heart simulator. Yeah, I want to go to the museum uh, or the uh, California Science Center, get in their little simulation pod, but I want them to tell me what two hearts feels like. <laughs> Let me be a cow. They have two hearts, right? I'm and then fact check myself now. But they also introduce uh, just some fun peripherals. Like they introduce a whole host of like, what do diseases even look like in the year five billion? One of them apparently just turns you to stone. Petrified regression. He's turning to stone. There won't be a cure for. A thousand years? Uh, but then they also... Octopus. It... It's an octopus, not a cow. You're going to have to take that part out. <laughs> <laughs> or they introduce the Duke of Manhattan, who's just a, who's just a hedonism it's... bot. <laughs> and they also say that apparently the universal symbol for hospitals is a, is a green moon on the side Which of a building. Which is so sick, because the universal sign for this is a weed building is a green cross. <laughs> So my immediate thought is all of those bags are Powerade and weed. <laughs> this place knows how to chill. Yeah, the cure And you get all... inside and it's nun, nurse, cat people. And you're like, oh, man. It's catnip then. <laughs> all I'm saying is that hemp is a great cure for lots of diseases if people would just get over the hangups of it. <laughs> That's all I'm really saying. That's what this episode's really getting at. <laughs> Legalize marijuana and let all those people that's out of the prison. Moral, that's the ultimate moral of Doctor Who. Legalize marijuana. I will say the answer I was looking for earlier when I asked how did Cassandra survive, I accepted your answer all the same. But the answer I was looking for is that she survived by continuing to be a brain in a jar until they got some skin off of her back. <laughs> and they just stretched that out. But who's back? Hers. Like, her her former body's back. I didn't know that her former body was still, like, living. I don't think they thought that through, because that didn't make a whole lot of sense either. Because I do like the line of, does that mean you're talking through your ask no questions? <laughs> ask not. Yeah, I loved that. That was very silly. A good joke, good <laughs> bit. But I also spent the rest of the episode going... But where did her skin come from? Because I did accept the logic of she was surviving in brain in a jar because that had been established that that's how she was surviving otherwise. <laughs> I like that she still looked just as crappy now as she did in the first episode. Yeah, they seem to have just used the same model again. No reason to not to. I did enjoy that. Her the... weird little, like, blood vessel thingy that I caught on and my uh, ADHD brain wouldn't let me look at anything else on screen other than her weird capillaries expanding. <laughs> I also enjoyed that, uh, not not in the immediate after she takes over Rose, the, the whole, like, I'm going to admire all the new curves. Like, that's a little, that's a little... Uh, cheesecakey for lack of a better term it is cheesecakey but come on you've been a piece of skin paper <laughs> stretched across a beef jerky drying rack of course you're gonna be feeling up yourself uh but what i did enjoy was when immediately after that you could tell that she's like unbuttoned her shirt a bit more she's just she's not wearing rose's jacket to be so she's like just fully out there and i'm like oh this this tells a lot about Cassandra as a character when she couldn't wear clothes. 
<laughs> when she wasn't able to work. When those. she when she was a shirt, and now she. Yeah, ew. When she was simply a piece of fabric, and then just meat fabric. The first opportunity she gets, she just like fully plants her lips on David Tennant. It's called snogging, Zach. Look it up. Sorry, she fully snogs the doctor. She, good on her, mate. <laughs> she saw her window of opportunity and she took it. Hey, you know what? We all Cassandras operate the same way. <laughs> the doctor and Cass- Cassandros, Cassandra Rose. Cassandros. I'll allow Cassandros. Cassandros uh, find a terminal that takes them into the int- into the quote intensive care unit. Uh, other quote the prison where they're keeping Jumba Jukiba. <laughs> it looks identical. It does. Just a bunch of little glowing green pea pods with just people born to be born as clones. Meat. They're to, just referred to as meat. Yeah, flesh. Flesh. The flesh has gotten out. Which, ew. Ew. Ew? <laughs> you just find that there's, hu- and apparently they're just being given every disease. They're born with every disease, I thought. But my question is, why did they need so many? That was also sort of my question. Like, I, I, I understand that it sells the, 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 the like, I understand that it really sets out cat nurses as the bad guys because not only are there like 10 pods, there are hundreds of pods. Yeah. It's all, well, it's but also, also that doesn't just because it's not like each person had a different set of diseases or a different set of illnesses. It seemed that each one of them had the same set of diseases. Yeah, they all had all the diseases. And I'm just like, that's not how. That's not how this works. <laughs> like, if you are trying to cure a disease, you don't give them that and also 900 other diseases at the and same also, time. And also, it's miraculous to me that none of those diseases are paralytic. They could all still walk just fine. They could all still walk, uh, which is which also doesn't track because they, they one of the things they cure turns you to stone. It's just like that. That was the part where it really starts to fall apart, where it couldn't have just been that each person in this pod has a different like. And there's so like little changes you could make. You could still visually have them have different types of sores because the graphics of a healthy person gaining the sores and illness looks from the from the flesh. Not good. The graphics were not good, gang. They looked stupid. Yeah, the, like they spent all their money on the on the cat makeup, I guess, because that was great. Yeah, but then, and face of Bo always. And of course, the face of Bo, yes, always looks good. <laughs> Never upset to see the face of Bo. Very upset that he said that he we will see him a third time, and that's it. Yeah, I trust the face of Bo with my life, sack. <laughs> But there could have just been so many, like, simple little changes that wouldn't have, like, affected the story or the script intensely, but would have made it feel less, like, dumb. Like, it feels pretty obvious that you don't give a lab rat every disease you're trying to cure at once. No, because eventually, after, like, the third or fourth disease, the rat's gonna die. Yeah, and they that's they, just kind of how sickness works is after the the body can only take so much unless these are superhuman flesh <laughs> bags which i'm willing to accept since this is the year 5 billion and 2 or something 5 billion 23 5 billion 23 there is a very real possibility that these are simply superhuman humans yeah, or they're specifically bred to maintain disease. They sort of hand wave it away with, you know, they're they're the plague carriers of the last ones to die. Like, I can accept that, too. What I have, diff- like, all you have to do, though, is just give each one, a like, just have each one person have a different disease. Not only that, but the nurses explain away their methods as saying it's a, quote, form of magic, unquote. Which also then, to me, just feels like, oh... This whole situation then is stupid. If your nurses are saying, oh, it's, we'll call it magic, perhaps, perhaps that's how they're able to maintain their diseases. Not only are they plagued, but they're also magicians. <laughs> and they're cats, so they're also their witches' familiars. <gasps> 
See, Zach, we're putting all the pieces together. <laughs> Speaking of familiars, let's talk about Chip. Yes. Uh, that Cass- cobalt-looking motherfucker. Cassandra has uh, a, a little clone lad of her own named Chip, who she says is decorated in her, in her favorite design. I think they meant for it to be a snake, but the unfortunate oh. thing is because so much of it is covered, it does just kind of look like they meant Paisley. Well, see, my thought was, because when I first saw him, I thought that they were tentacle, like suction markings. Oh. And I was like, oh, fuck, no, fish, fish, I was wrong. <laughs> um, So that's what I thought that it was. I, I didn't actually hear the that line. That he'd been suckered? Yeah, yeah, I didn't hear the line of he's been decorated in her favorite print. Her favorite pattern, I think, is exactly what she says. And I think, like I said, I'm pretty sure it's meant to be snake. But because he's covered in, like, clothing, none of the snakes ever complete anywhere. So it just sort of looks like he's decorated in, like, paisley henna tattoos. And he's incredibly pale. And there's also no explanation as to where he came from. Yeah, he's just a clone that he that she a has. A clone with a half-life, which... Yeah. The half-life justification. All right, I'll buy it. And then it's... Even the clone just... Or just... it. It's a... Him having a half-life makes sense in, in terms of the story. Yes. But then my question is, how did Cassandra, brain in a jar, at this moment in time, maintain her jar status and also make a clone? Yeah, like who... Who rolled her off of the? It, it just raises it raises too many questions. And then, but then Chip Chip is a fun addition though, especially because he's got. At one point, uh, Rose refers to him as Gollum, and there is sort of a a, a Smeagol-y quality. Or we I said Cobalt during the reco- during the during. Uh, yeah, but then I took your joke because you took mine and that, eye for an eye, motherfucker. Fair enough. Uh, yeah, he's a he was a little cobalt kind of energy where he's just like, yes, mistress, I will do whatever you ask. That I'm is the one thing here. though that I I do appreciate in him being a clone is I always feel bad when you do have toady characters mm-hmm. who dedicate their whole body, mind, and soul to like a central figure. But when it's a clone, it's a little different because they were created for a purpose. Yeah. Um, so it's it's very true. Wait, if he's a half-life, if he's a clone, what is he a clone from? If he's a half-life, does that mean at one point there were two? I mean, there had to have been something to base Chip off of. It's just um, a regular snake. So there's probably just a regular Chip out there somewhere. Normal, um, normal Chip. Although in Unsalted America we called him Fry. We made the same joke, but different. You said in America we call it fry. I said unsalted chip. <laughs> Zach, I think we need to. I think we need to spend some time apart. <laughs> I think we need to maybe give up this podcast and pivot into just stand-up comedy. <laughs> <laughs> but then, uh, after as a uh, Cassandra apparently tucked a little uh, sleeping spray in her in her bosom. Yeah, her her chloroform spray. Yeah, so as the as the doctor is where the fuck she got that? Oh, as the doctor is like chewing out the cat nurse nuns for building a people farm, they the two cat ladies run off, and her response is, "All right, psst, and you're out." <laughs> and then she tucks him into a pod for him to gain every disease and die, <laughs> as if he can't just reform which i su- it doesn't seem that she is aware that he can fair. regenerate that is fair she seems to be under the impression that he changed his face through surgery the same doctor with a new face that hypocrite let's get the name of his surgery we- again just like i don't understand how how do you as- grab the memory of these are two are the same doctor, but you can't also fetch the memory of how that happened. It's so whatever. This, well, this script's got a lot was, of holes in it. I don't think, in defense of Cassandra, I don't think she was going that deep. I don't think she <laughs> physically can. After Cassandra traps him in there, she tries, as you pointed out, tries striking this like bargain with the cats to get a lot of money. And when it doesn't go her way, she just lets everyone out anyway, including the doctor. <laughs> Which there is an element of chaos that I do appreciate 
Cassandra's taken a lot of weird, wacky, almost out of character terms, but then on the flippity flip, we don't know Cassandra to be anybody else other than a racist piece of skin. Yeah, it's just like it really feels like they were trying to have fun with this character that is deeply I'm, I, I'm prejudiced, evil. She's an evil character. Like, like not chaotic a, evil now. Yeah. She's a chaotic evil character and there's some fun to writing those characters. Then they keep trying to like turn around and make her sympathetic. Well, she doesn't become sympathetic until she body hops out of Rose into the doctor, back into Rose, back into the doctor, back into Rose, then into one of the flesh people. Yeah, into one of the flesh people. Dize- flesh disease. Flesh, flesh, flesh. Just it's a horrible word to say. We'll call them cows. <laughs> they do. They do say they tried uh, before they before they tried these this people farm. They tried bio cattle. So I guess uh, this is just a further extension of bio cattle or rats. They can be people rats. <laughs> Rat people. Regardless, it's not until she jumps into one of their heads and then goes back into roses that she starts having a change saying that they're all alone. All they want to be is touched. They've never been touched. But as far as we know, for the past couple thousand years, Cassandra also has been kind of entirely alone. Yeah, it's just... This is not new for her. Yeah, it it doesn't really... It's just one of those where, like, I I understand what you're going for, but it doesn't really work. (laughs) It's out of place. It's out of character. But then they also establish that this is another one where it kind of threw me off where they talk about how uh, Cassandra is looking at one of the bodies and asks the doctor if, it, if it's safe to even be looking at them because they have all the diseases. And his response is the air is sterile, but just don't let them touch you. Now, I will say we do. We're also coming at this with a 2020 perspective. I suppose that's fair. Because in 2006, yes, you could get sick from a cough. From the common cold, but there was not as much concern about infected air as there is now. Yeah, I just, yeah, maybe it's maybe it's post pandemic brain where I'm like, that doesn't like even if you sterilized the air in here, it's still in them breathing at you. (laughs) But uh, like I said, maybe that uh, maybe I'm I I said remember uh, Zach every every disease manifests only on the skin yeah nowhere else (laughs) I mean I I gotta remind myself what I said at the beginning of the podcast there are some things in this that doesn't that just don't make sense and you have to accept it I recognize that it doesn't make it any less upsetting yeah it's that is true although I do have one more thing that really really upset me the nurse falling down the shaft like she's Luke Skywalker no, but we can talk about that for a minute. Yeah. Um, or, or the one or the this worthy nurse case that animation. appeared from nowhere on the st- like. It's not like a staircase where she could have popped on at a different floor. It's a ladder. The ladder went from the bottom of the tower upwards. There's no way she snuck onto a ladder. And then she gets she gets like all the diseases at once and immediately Palpatine falls down the shaft. I was, yeah, that's the next reference I was going to make. Specifically the Worthy Kids animation of Palpatine where he just kind of bangs out and then is floating in space. <laughs> there's somewhere there's a cat lady in the space. That was the only thing I, I really wrote down that bugged me because she really did just materialize. And then fell down that shaft at what felt like 100 miles an hour. Like she went from zero to, uh, what's the ter- what's that term? To be fair, to be fair, to be fair, though. zero to terminal velocity immediately. To be fair, though, there is there are hundreds, if not more, there are thousands, if not hundreds, of pods. So I think the logic here is not only is the hospital very tall, but it's very deep. Yeah, and so because it's deep. That leads to there, there, there can be the justification made that there are miles upon miles of space underneath, Mm -hmm. which then also means how the fuck did they get up to the top so fast? (laughs) I feel like their arms should have gotten tired before they got all the way up there. 
so the thing that really bothered me was when the doctor decide figures out his ingenious plan to cure all of the diseases that everybody has. No, is, the, you didn't like the Powerade mukbang? Yeah, took all the Powerades that he says out loud are intravenous solutions. Give me the intravenous solutions for every single disease. Move it! Meaning they have to go in your veins to work. I did not catch that. That's infuriating. Yeah, like, it. they already were pretty well coded as IV bags, but you could have, but he verbally out loud says they are intravenous solutions and then shoves them into a thing that applies them topically. That was one of the writers remembering the his word of the day calendar <laughs> and wanting to put a, and wanting to put that word into the script and went, this is going to make the doctor sound so smart. The doctor is finally doctoring. He's going to be the smartest man in the room. Yeah, just and then it just makes it sound like the writer's dumb and doesn't didn't look up what the word intravenous <laughs> meant because that like it's it's one thing to be like, OK, this is a science thing. It happens in the year five billion. Science has changed. You've described something one way, you and then put, you've done something different. You put a label on something, and then went, nobody's going to know what that word means. I don't know what it means, therefore nobody else will. Yeah, and it's just... It, it's stupid. It makes me so... That part just drives me crazy. Cause, and, you know, I will say, maybe it just bothers me because I work in medicine. I know... I know it, it bothers you the same way that the line on the prosthetics bother me, where it's it's not important. Yeah. It is not. Well, I was going to say it's not important to the story, but if you label something as being intravenal and then it gets applied topically. Yeah, just and then. For, and because then for, you could even make the fair ju or the fair assumption of like if they were to consume it, perhaps it gets absorbed via or like via the stomach but to my knowledge things that are consumed and applied topically usually do not go hand in hand and do not work the same yeah they don't work like intra like if something is being applied intravenously it's because it has to the people that make drugs don't like making you inject yourself with things if something can be topical or oral it's so much easier so the fact that they're intravenous means that that's the way they have to be administered that's why they co go to the Cool Kush Hospital. <laughs> the Cool Kush Hospital, yeah. Yeah. And then, to you know, and even, the then good, even if good. it was, even if you do want to make the argument that when they all got sprayed with it, they ingested it, it wasn't just the people in the elevator that got it. They wa Part of the whole premise was go out there, spread the cure, shake hands with them, and that will Touch, cure them of the disease. Breathe in each, breathe in each other's air. It just It'll cure you of the disease that you've had your entire lives in minutes. In seconds. But the doctor says he knows a lot about medicine, so... That means it works. Mm -hmm. Like I said, this is the first time we've seen the doctor doctoring. Yeah. It's... He's a professional in his field, Zach. Just let him be. <laughs> God. Yeah. It just it uh, like I I don't know if that only matters to me. I hope it matters for other people. God, both when I took my first notes and now when we're watching it together. Ooh, doggy, did that make me upset? <laughs> We didn't talk nearly enough about David Tennant's uh, cute little freckles. <laughs> That's it. And his great his great acting moment when Cassandra is in his body. I know we talked about it a little bit. I just want to think about it some more. I Thanks. think I think um, we didn't talk enough about David Tennant's cute little freckles is going to be the pull quote for the beginning of the episode. <laughs> and you're going back to... I've said before why why some people dislike Rose. Talking about that that scene where David Tennant gets taken over by Cassandra, he, you know, talks out that he's slim and a little bit foxy. You've been looking. You like it. <laughs> I don't know why they did that. No, my thing though is later on. Then she goes like, "I can see why you like him." Completely mad. She likes it going down. It wouldn't be such a problem if it wasn't for at the very beginning of the episode, Rose kisses Mickey goodbye. 
I was waiting for one of us to bring that up because that that is an ongoing conversation is fucking leave Mickey alone. Right? Just let the boy be. Like you Why both deserve better than each other. Every single episode that Mickey's here, we relapse. We go back. You both deserve better than each other. <laughs> like I'm sure that it's immensely comforting to Rose knowing that she has because it, it seems that her two, like, main supports are Mickey and her mom. Yes. She still has her mom. She will always have her mom. We don't need Mickey as the support yeah. anymore. Yeah, it's just, I don't... Because not only do they kiss, they he also says, okay, cool, bye, love you. Like, they're dating, like nothing happened. But then in when, they, when the episode begins on new new earth they talk about how like oh yeah we've like we've seen this before it was the year five billion we watched the sun explode that was our first date we had chips it's like i mean which like i understand is like that's a joke that couldn't be a joke but considering 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 the fact that we have a now like much more age appropriate doctor for our companion doctor no Considering now that we have a much more age appropriate love interest for Rose, yeah, it doesn't make any sense now to have this weird, complicated relationship with both the doctor and with Mickey. We don't need more complications. We're already trying to justify intravenal being a topically applied medication <laughs> and having it work. We don't need relationship issues as well. Yeah, it's, it's too much. It's just like, why? Like I'm not a I, I get polyamory as a thing, but it's so very clear that that is not something Mickey's okay no. with. No, it's also not something that seems to be happening. I feel like my chain keeps getting yanked. Yeah, it just I mean, I, I it makes you feel bad. Like I think this is partly why people start dragging on Rose is like they keep bringing up the way she mistreats Mickey over and over again. Because that's the thing, though. Neither of them are mistreating the other because mickey's very aware of rose's feelings for the doctor as we saw in the christmas episode yes he was upset at her for like bringing up the tardis and just wanting christmas to be christmas he saw how upset she was at the doctor being unresponsive Mickey clearly knows how she feels about the doctor, yet he sticks around. But also, she keeps dragging him along, or she doesn't say, hey, dude, back away. However, however, when the TARDIS came back around and he heard the little siren call of the TARDIS, he came running back to her. So they're both bad for each other. But they're also really good for each other because like, well, no, you know, I take that back. I take that back because the first episode, Mickey says, hey, let's go get a drink. And she goes, "Mm, yeah, let's go get a drink. But also there's a game on, isn't there? They're just, it's, it's annoying. It's not going anywhere. It's not fun. Move on. Yeah, just, I don't, I don't like it. Let Mickey do his own thing. Give Mickey his own show. (laughs) Spin off with Mickey. We'll be okay then. We're getting near, um... Doctor Who spinoff time, by the way. There are a couple shows that do spin off from Doctor Who. Ew. Um, you say that, but one of them stars Captain Jack. Hubba hubba time criminal. <laughs> Hubba wow wow. Tell me more, tell me more. Like, did he have a car? <laughs> Was it a time car? Just gonna call back to every joke we've made during the last like eleven episodes. I'm so mad you didn't catch on. I was doing a grease reference. I know you're doing a grease reference. Okay. Yeah, I picked up on that. There's a lot of good bits in it, and I really and I really appreciate those bits. But even even the bits that are good though, I still have a hang up with. Like there's a like the part when Cassandra takes over the doctor. Why was that the first episode for David Tennant? Why do you want Part of his first episode to be he gets mind controlled by somebody else. I think it's because and my my justification for that is it was a fun actor moment. We got to see a lot of silly complexities from David Tennant. We haven't. And granted, this is only the second episode we've seen his doctor. The first full episode, we don't have any of the. Uh, PTSD war flashbacks quite yet 
I think this is the moment in time in which the writers are saying we need to get the audience to fall in love with David Tennant Doctor, which they're not wrong. It's working. <laughs> We're falling in love over here. I mean, at the very least, it does it does make you enjoy watching him act, even if you're not sure about his portrayal yet. So I guess I, I guess I understand. Now, that. my thing is, I do. I think this was the episode for that. No, I, I really would like there to be like a full body swapping episode because God damn, if I'm not a sucker for body swap episodes, <laughs> any sci fi show where that's in, I, that's my favorite one. <laughs> and then uh, at the very end, the doctor has to like order Cassandra to get out of Rose's body and Eventually, Rose flies into Chip because Chip is a willing volunteer. Rose doesn't fly into Chip. Cassandra does. You're right. Sorry. Cassandra flies into Chip as a willing volunteer. My 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 uh, my flub on my thoughts there. And then Chip immediately starts to die. Which I get. I get that. Yeah. I mean, there's a part of me that I do. Because I am... they did establish very early on that Chip has a half-life so we already know that he's not going to live very long and i can only imagine the physical trauma that happens when a new body essence enters into an already living body yeah and they also say that he's also his heart's racing because he was just under an extreme amount of stress being chased around by every disease and i do like that yes there is a little question of ethics there but because he's a clone because he's dedicated his whole life to serving his mistress. Absolutely, he's okay with Cassandra entering his body. There's also something that makes me wonder. Did Chip know he was dying? And therefore, when he volunteered, it was a little sneaky sneak moment where he's like, yes, come inside me, Cassandra. Let's live together for these last 30 minutes I have, mistress. Maybe, probably. I mean, there's no hint for that, but there is something kind because of, Cassandra knows immediately that he's dying. What's upsetting to me is then after that moment, she is seemingly all right with dying, even though not 30 seconds before she was wildly upset at the thought of dying. Yeah, she's like, I don't want to die. She says from Rose's body. So cl- so really what they mean is, I don't want the story to end with me in Rose's body, so we have to make this, we have to make this work. <sighs> and then they decide to give Cassandra, like, a sympathetic ending by having Chip Sandra go meet original Cassandra at a, at a party. They time travel back, so I was right the whole time about this being a uh, a prequel episode because we did go back into Cassandra's past. Yes. And we saw her as a full flesh and blood human. <laughs> it did end up points being points for me. Yes, you I you get a point for that. You get you got you got two points today, one for each. 13 out of 26, baby. I'm back up to my average. Away. <laughs> but yeah, they and they try to give him the sympathetic and give her the sympathetic ending by having her walk up to her past self and be the memory she mentioned at the first half of the episode where it's the last night someone called her beautiful. That was the last time anyone told me I was beautiful. Huh? You look so beautiful. I mean, yes, it is a like a redemption ending for her, but the fact that it is herself calling herself beautiful, like, eh, that's just self-love. That's fine. I mean, it's, it's fine. It also just like one of the character's biggest flaws is her vanity. Like the fact that she believes herself to be physically superior down to her cells that when her, her like final moments are being told that she's beautiful by herself. It still feels like that character didn't really grow it in any way. It just Which feels is kinda also weird. kind of, I, it's annoying. It's upsetting. I think it's appropriate for her. Yeah. I, just, I don't think we're ever supposed to like Cassandra. Yeah. It's a very weird ending. I do. Because I hate her, and I, therefore I love her. <laughs> and you'll continue saying moisturize me for for weeks. The way that I've said that in public now, and I know I know who's seen the show, because I said it to a friend of mine, and she whipped around in slow motion and went, what the f- 
fuck did you say? <laughs> and if she's listening, she'll know. <laughs> but <laughs> it's a fun thing to say, dude. I, I highly recommend it. Because then when you do say moisturize me, people go, oh, yeah, here I have some cream. Here, here I have some cream. Yeah, it's wonderful. <laughs> Otherwise, people just go, are you okay? <laughs> well, that was Series 2, Episode 1, New Earth. Uh, as I've already established, I'm not a big fan of this episode. I honestly, like I said last episode, I don't think Series 2 is... Well, in my opinion, Series 2 is the weakest series of all of the ones that I have seen. I think it was they had they had a full slate of ideas for series one. So even the ones that weren't good felt really strong. And then they get to this and it really feels like they're scraping the bottom of the barrel for some of these things. Like the, like the fact that I this don't is even a think it's a scraping at the bottom of the barrel. I think that they're saying, cool, let's build upon things that were already established in series one. Let's let's try to bring in some. Some familiar faces. Just, <laughs> familiar face of bows. Yeah, some familiar faces. And Cassandra's another face. <laughs> She's only a face. They, they really brought in the two characters that were just faces. Yeah. I think they're a package deal. <laughs> you just turn the face of Bo around and it's Cassandra. The third time we see the face of Bo, it's Cassandra's taken over. <laughs> That would make me so deeply upset. Moisturize I love the me. Moisturize me. He doesn't need it because his little containment unit. I thought he was like floating in liquid. Turns out he's in like a humidifier. Yeah, it's his smoke, they call it. <laughs> it's in his own face of bow terrarium, <laughs> which is kind of incredible, which only makes that makes that whole prop even more impressive. My favorite thing is how they go. It's telepathy. Oh man, we we hate we hate telepathy. Like ah oh, God, I I don't like when somebody can speak to me directly in my brain. I think that's so that way they don't have to try to make the puppet's mouth move. <laughs> uh, I think you're probably right. Because <laughs> it does kind. Of, he blinks a lot, but he's not. He doesn't have a lot of movement. He kind of moves his whole head like a piece of big, like he's a big fish. Yes. His, like eyes move around a lot and mouth just kind of goes. But that's kind of it. <laughs> um, I just wanted to talk about him some more. I, I love that guy, man. <laughs> yeah, the face of Bo is really, is really neat. Um, he's also, the nurse says he's dying. And then at the end of the episode, he goes, nah. <laughs> I'll, I'll die later. <laughs> it reminds me of uh, the help a little bit. Skeeter's mom the entire book has cancer and then by the end of the book when when Skeeter is like oh I don't know if I'm gonna I don't know if I'm gonna go off to New York like I gotta be here and take care of you you're sick and then she goes I've decided I'm not gonna die and then everybody's like all right cool all right I guess I'm gonna go to New York which you could also take as the mom just being like I don't want to hold my daughter back from her dreams mm -hmm. I'll make her feel better by saying this thing but it did feel very much like that. The face of Bo just going, I've decided not to die. Not <laughs> yet. Well, <laughs> and I, I do like the doctor referring to him as enigmatic. That's one of my favorite <laughs> textbook words. Textbook enigmatic. That's one of my favorite words in the English dictionary. Thanks to that one episode of SpongeBob. The inner machinations of my mind are an enigma. So maybe I don't mean scraping bottle, bot the bottom of the barrel. I just, I think the, this feels so much weaker than most of the scripts in the first one, in the first series. This does feel a little bit like every Marvel thing that's coming out now, which is just, yeah, we have all these great ideas. Let's just throw them all together. Some of them are really good. Others not so great. But they will complement each other. Yeah, it's like, I... I understand. Like, I'm not going to sit here and pretend that I know how difficult it is to write a full season of television. And so I don't I don't want to sit here and make it sound like I'm better than the show. But just like it just it feels like they had their ideas ready to go for series one. Then they got to series two and just some of their ideas haven't been as good yet. So 
the good news Granted, is that this is the first episode yeah. technically there are still some good things to come uh i i think you'll enjoy quite a number of episodes in this i just it's also i i also understand that i'm coming from a place of just some of them don't fit for me personally yeah but as long as i still get a few shots <laughs> of david Tennant's different body parts i'll be okay with that <laughs> I'm all right. Well, even then, even then, some bit of good news is the next episode takes us back to Victorian London. Oh, hell yeah. Or Victorian England. I don't think it's actually, it's hell not in London. Hell yes. Um, the Victorian, uh, the Victorian era. That's what, that's what I mean. The Victorian era. So it'll hell be. Hell yeah. Sweeney Todd and all that bullshit. <laughs> so, uh, but we will get back to that on the next episode of Who Is My Doctor? Who is my doctor? Who is indeed. And so we depart New Earth and on to the rest of Series 2. What episodes are you looking forward to us covering this season? You can let us know on Twitter, Blue Sky Threads, and Instagram at WimdyPod. That's W-I-M-D-P-O-D. And next time we'll be taking a little howl at the moon with Tooth and Claw. We're back from the holidays rested and regenerated for your Tuesdays. Because Tuesdays are still Whose Days. Happy New Year!